In this video, we will discuss the process of micturation, micturation reflex, and the abnormalities related to micturation. Micturation is a process by which urinary bladder empties when it becomes filled with urine. Before we discuss the process of micturation, let's discuss the structures involved in this process. So this is kidney. Kidney, as you all know, it forms urine. Urine moves from the kidney via the ureters and it enters into the urinary bladder. Urinary bladder, as you can see, this is a pyramidal shaped structure when it is empty and it becomes balloon shaped when it is filled with urine. As you can see here that the ureters are entering into the urinary bladder via its posterior wall and its opening is located on the upper part of a triangular structure which is called as trigon of the bladder. So both the ureters are opening on the upper corners of trigon of the bladder. Okay, so a urinary bladder is a balloon shaped structure. It has two sphincters. One is called the internal urethral sphincter, which is under involuntary control. And the other sphincter is called as external urethral sphincter, which is under voluntary control. So let's discuss the nerve supply of urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is supplied by both sensory and motor nerves. The sensory nerve carries impulses from the stretch receptors and enters into S2 and 3 sacral segments of the spinal cord. The motor nerve arises again from S2 and 3 segments of the spinal cord, travel via the parasympathetic nerves and supply the trusor muscle, which is a smooth muscle located in the wall of the urinary bladder and the internal urethral sphincter. Both of these are supplied by the parasympathetic motor nerves. Both the sensory and the motor, parasympathetic motor nerve are present inside the pelvic nerves. Urinary bladder is also su supplied by a skeletal motor nerve which is called as the pudendal nerve and it supplies the external urethral sphincter. The process of micturation takes place through micturation reflex. Micturation reflex is a bladder to bladder autonomic reflex that involves both, both the sensory and the motor components. So how, it, how this reflex initiates? As soon as the bladder is filled with urine, it is going to stretch the bladder wall. The stretch of the bladder wall leads to stimulation of the stretch receptors located in the bladder wall. This leads to increased sensory impulses within the sensory nerves towards the sacral segment of the spinal cord, S2 and S3. From the sacral segments of the spinal cord, the motor impulses arise and travel via the parasympathetic nerve back towards the urinary bladder. These parasympathetic motor nerves coming from S2 and 3 sacral segment of the spinal cord are going to supply the detrusor muscle in the wall of the bladder and the internal urethral sphincter. So because of this reflex, the detrusor muscle is going to contract and the internal urethral sphincter is going to relax. And this micturation reflex is going to cause micturation in infants and young children. But remember that it is not necessary that every micturation reflex leads to urination. In adults, the micturation is controlled by the higher centers, by the conscious control. Let's see the conscious control of micturation. Again, when the urinary bladder is filled with urine, it is going to cause stretch of the bladder wall. Sensory impulses will travel via the sensory nerve into the sacral segments of the spinal cord. From here, the impulses will also move to the higher centers, the micturation center, which is located within the Pons. So impulses will move from here to pons and cerebrum. The higher centers send both facilitatory and inhibitory impulses back towards the urinary bladder. What it, what it is going to cause is that whenever the environment is not facilitating the micturation, what happens that the higher centers are going to send inhibitory impulses back towards the urinary bladder and these inhibitory impulses are going to inhibit the contraction of detrusor muscle 
and it is going to cause contraction of both internal and external urethral sphincter. So because of this inhibitory impulses from the higher centers, now micturation will not take place. Though the micturation reflex has, in, has been initiated, but it will not lead to micturation because the higher centers has caused inhibition of micturation reflex. This is the conscious control of micturation. What happens when the environment is favorable for micturation and the person wants to micturate? Again, the micturation reflex is initiated. Again, because of the stretch of the bladder wall, micturation reflex initiates and the motor impulses are sent back towards the bladder. Now, this process is facilitated by impulses from the higher centers and these facilitatory impulses are going to facilitate the parasympathetic motor nerves to cause increased contraction of detrusor muscle. On the other hand, the same impulses are going to cause inhibition of external urethral sphincter via the pudendal nerve. So now, when the external urethral sphincter relaxes and the bladder wall contracts, it is going to cause micturation. So the conscious control of micturation involves both facilitatory and inhibitory impulses from higher centers. During micturation, the pressure changes inside the bladder can be measured by a process which is called systometry by inserting a catheter inside the urinary bladder. And the recording that shows a curve of pressure versus the volume is called the systometrogram. It is achieved by systometry, the process by which we can measure the pressure inside the urinary bladder. So what is happening in this graph, we can see that the x-axis is showing the volume while the y-axis is showing the pressure changes inside the urinary bladder. So as, as the volume changes inside the bladder, volume increases inside the bladder, the pressure is also going to change. Let's see, when the volume inside the bladder is zero, the pressure is also almost around zero millimeters, zero centimeters of water. <clears throat> okay. So as soon as the volume inside the bladder increases, as the urinary bladder fills with urine and its volume increases, you can see that the pressure also increases. Over here, you can see that the pressure is not increasing that much. There is a flat line and then again there is increase in pressure. Why there is a, a relatively flat line over here though the volume inside the bladder is increasing? This is because of a law which is called as law of Laplace. So uh, what does this law states? This states that pressure is equals to two times the tension divided by the radius. What does this mean? This means that within a spherical viscous, the tension increases as the organ fills, but so does the radius. Therefore, the pressure increase is slight until the organ is relatively full. So over here you can see as the radius of the bladder is increasing, the tension is also increasing, there is not as such change in pressure. But as soon as the urinary bladder fills to an extent, then there is increase in pressure. Okay. So uh, what are these uh, dotted lines that you see here? These are called as micturation contractions and they appear whenever there is a micturation reflex. The first urge to micturate, you can see over here that the first micturation reflex initiates when the bladder fills to a volume of about 150 milliliters and at around 400 milliliters, there is a very strong urge to micturate. To summarize, as the volume of the bladder increases, the pressure also increases. This relatively flat line or the low increase in pressure is because of law of Laplace. And as soon as the pressure increases because of the stretch on the wall of the bladder, the micturation flexes are initiated which are going to cause micturation. Let's discuss the abnormalities of micturation. 
So the first abnormality of maturation that we are going to discuss is called atonic bladder. What happens in this that there is damage to the afferent fibers or the sensory nerve fibers that are coming from the urinary bladder. So whenever there is damage to the sensory nerve fibers, definitely whenever there is filling of the bladder and there is stretch of the bladder wall, these nerves are not going to be stimulated. No impulses are generated in the sensory nerves and there will be no maturation reflex. So what happens that the bladder fills to its capacity? There is no generation of maturation reflex. So despite that the efferent fibers are intact, they are not going to cause contraction of the bladder because of lack of the maturation reflex. And the bladder fills to its capacity and then there is dribbling of urine out of the bladder. That is called as overflow incontinence. In atonic bladder, there is damage to the sensory nerves. The bladder is distended, but it is hypotonic. There is no tone in the bladder wall. And there is overflow incontinence or dribbling of urine. The second abnormality that we will discuss is called the automatic bladder. In automatic bladder, as the name indicates, the bladder becomes automatic, means the control from the higher centers is lost. This can occur when there is damage to the spinal cord above the sacral segment. The sacral segment is intact, so the micturation reflexes are also intact and the bladder becomes automatic. The conscious control of bladder is lost. The third abnormality is called uninhibited neurogenic bladder. In uninhibited neurogenic bladder, again, there is damage in the spinal cord above the sacral segments. But the damage is there in the inhibitory signals. Therefore, the facilitatory impulses are overexcited. There, is, there are only facilitatory impulses passing from the higher centers to the, sec, uh, to the uh, urinary bladder, leading to uncontrolled frequent micturation. Because of presence of the facilitatory impulses and absence of the inhibitory control, the sacral centers are so excitable that even a small quantity of urine elicits an uncontrollable micturation reflex, leading to uncontrolled frequent micturation. 